The first tests that we're going to do are visual tests. We see a lot of hair that is marked virgin, but that's become a pretty gimmicky catchphrase. So how do you know if a hair is truly virgin? You're going to pick up a strand that is large enough for you to see the color, and you're going to hold these tips near its base. If the tips are not lighter than the base, then this hair has been completely processed and is in no way a virgin product. Now, I've asked several suppliers why they do this, um, and I usually get a lot of blank stares, but one in particular actually had the audacity to tell me that, well, it was virgin before it was processed, so technically it's a virgin product. So uh, that wasn't very, uh, very awesome, and it certainly wasn't the answer that I was looking for. So if the product that you are eyeing is labeled virgin, be sure to do this simple test to just check and see if the label is actually accurate. The second test that you wanna look for is the taper. Now, lower quality hair extensions do not draw out the smaller strands, which results in a product with severely tapered ends. This is important because when you install this extension with a severe taper, you won't be able to keep that length without looking like you have stringy ends that need a haircut anyway. Big beauty supply stores that do not specialize in extensions are notorious for this. Our next series of tests deal with how the hair feels. First, pick up a section of hair and determine whether or not it feels cool to the touch. Because when hair retains its moisture, it will wick the heat away from your hands, resulting in a cooler feel. By contrast, hair that does not retain its moisture feels warmer, like an insulator. As a general rule, the cooler the hair feels, the higher the quality. Now the second test is to determine whether or not the product has retained its cuticles. Now this is a subtle test for feel and is one that takes practice to feel the difference. So you're just gonna pick up a strand or two from the bundle and you're gonna run your fingers down to the tips and you're gonna hold it with one hand and then you're gonna run the other hand up in the opposite direction. Now, if you get resistance when you go up the strand, you're actually feeling the cuticle. If it feels the same in both directions, it's probably because it's had that cuticle removed. The last test that I wanna tell you about is one that you shouldn't need very often, but it's valuable to know because synthetic hair and human hair often look very similar. So to, de to determine which one you have, I want you to snip a small strand away from your bundle. And we're actually gonna light these on fire. So when you have a synthetic, it will do one of two things. It will burn out and get a little charred or it will light up and become molten. But both of these will smell like burnt plastic. So I'll show you what that looks like. Now I know that this is a flame retardant Kinecolon fiber, which is why it burn out. But I know you can't smell this through the camera, but it doesn't smell like much. It actually smells just like, I don't know, like a, like a burnt wrapper, just like plastic. There's nothing terribly notable. Now human hair, by contrast, will ignite and you'll actually need to blow it out. And I can assure you that uh, that stinks. <laughs> so you can definitely smell the sulfur coming off of that. So that is how you will determine whether or not it's human hair or a synthetic hair. Now, determining hair quality can be tricky if you're not sure what to look for. And retailers that don't specialize in extensions are often just as uneducated and as easily misled as every other buyer. So it's really important and I want you to be vigilant, perform your own quality tests, and make sure that you're buying from reputable suppliers that you trust to know the difference in the quality.